Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome back to theCUBE's live coverage of HPE Discover 2024. I'm your host, Rebecca Knight, along with my co-host and co-analyst, Dave Vellante. Dave, we're welcoming two new guests to the show, two first timers. Well, you know, AI is complicated. As simple as it seems when you talk to ChatGPT, to actually apply it to enterprise use cases isn't so simple. So, that's why you need help. Well, let's get into this, these, this exceedingly complicated topic. I'd like to welcome Mark Waters, SVP HPE Global Sales at HPE. Thank you so much for coming on the show. Thank you. And Abdi Ghadarzi, he is the Gen, Gen AI Enterprise Performance Leader at Deloitte. Thank you so much for coming on the show, Abdi. Thank you for the invitation. So I want to I start with you, Abdi, because Deloitte has announced a strategic collaboration with the HPE around AI to co-develop AI solutions. So why don't you tell our viewers a little bit more about these solutions, um, how you're developing them and how clients benefit from them. Absolutely, so first of all, our partnership with HPE goes over two decades or almost three decades long. We've been innovating for the enterprise for as long and we've been collaborating in this effort together. So the latest uh, concept in the world of Gen AI that we brought forward is about silicon to service idea. So how do you actually, you know, acquire all these powerful technologies and how do you get value out of them? That is the most important question for every executive at the enterprise level. So our collaboration is about how do you build up the stack ready for the enterprise capability? How do you actually apply the use cases for front office, back office, customers, business partners, and how do you get value out of it in a way that amplifies whatever the, the enterprise goals are, growth, expansion, quality, customer service, whatever that is, this collaboration with HPE, NVIDIA, and Deloitte will bring that to the table. You know, Mark, we've been following, of course, you know, the, the adoption of AI in the enterprise. The consumer, pretty straightforward. I could, if I could build a million GPU cluster, I'm going to sell more ads. Check, it's not as clear cut in the enterprise. It seems like a lot of the applications are, are you know, chat GPT-like. Um, and we're hitting singles on the ROI front, but people are really eager to start hitting you know, doubles, and sorry to use the baseball analogy. You know, this has got to be like something. I thought you were talking cricket. There's got to be something okay, in yeah. cricket, that's, yeah. that's, but I don't know cricket. But bigger ROI, bigger NPVs, yep. that's what people are, are dying to get. So how do you, how, what are you seeing out in the market? How do you segment things? And, you know, when are we really going to be digging in and how can you help? Yeah, well we can certainly help customers hit a few boundaries <laughs> if you yeah, like and put you some go. runs on the board. <laughs> now, um, so what are we seeing in the market? Actually we see organizations have identified use cases. I mean there's, there's, there's a ton of candidate use cases out there that people want to try and want to test. But one of the challenges is, okay, well how do I prioritize these? As you say, how do I understand what benefits can be realized? from those use cases, and how, how do I move that quickly? Because actually, speed is going to be important, so time to value is important for organizations. And, and one of the keys to that is expertise. Because we can talk about AI, and we can talk about AI platforms, and you, know, you heard some great announcements from Hewlett Packard Enterprise across the, across the last couple of days. But really the key is, okay, well how do you make the AI sing and dance? And how do you make that really deliver the outcome for the business? And that's what this collaboration is Absolutely. all about, to bring that underlying fundamental technology, the expertise that HPE has, and the kind of industry awareness and solution focus that Deloitte has, to speed time to value, drive the experience, and ultimately hit that benefit realization that you talked about. Okay, so two global companies, both really astute technology firms know how to apply technology to create business value. I'm sure the same thing happened inside of HPE and Deloitte where you had literally thousands of use, incoming use cases. Hey, we'd like to do this, 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 and this, and yeah. 10,000 others. How did you, each of your organizations, or how is your organization prioritizing, and where are you seeing wins that you can then help your customers think through their value? Yeah, I mean, the use cases are vast and, and countless, mm -hmm. but you have to have some guiding principles in order to unlock the value of AI, especially generative AI. We apply four different principles. Number one principle is around, it has to be surrounding humans and enable humans rather than replacing humans. Second, it has to bring significant amount of automations to create touchless capabilities. Third, in my opinion, one of the most important ones, it needs to be trustworthy. 
you could apply the greatest technologies. If your business cannot trust it, it cannot get value out of it, it's worthless technology implementation. And the fourth one around orchestration capabilities across various ecosystem players. So think about this partnership. The, the hardware capabilities, computing power comes from HPE. There's data that needs to be unlocked. There are logic that needs to be established. That's where Deloitte comes in and brings industry expertise and techni technology expertise and engineering capabilities on top of what NVIDIA and HPE do. And then that's where the magic happens, so. So in terms of this guiding principle that it has to not replace humans, but empower them and surround them and, and, and help them be more productive, more creative, maybe have other time for other kinds of things. What, how, what drove that to be a guiding principle? Because I know that there is still a lot of concern and fear, frankly, around the, the jobs dislocation that AI, that AI will contribute to. Yeah, if you think about, you know, first of all, humans are running the enterprise. Humans are the ones that are innovating AI. So humans are not going to be replaced. So if you think about your design in a way that, how do you empower the humans? How do you allow them to come up with more creative capabilities, more innovations? Think about the strategic activities rather than mundane, you know, like commodity tasks that needs to be performed, transactions, and analyzing data and other things. If you pivot all those you know, brain power into more strategic activities, then humans actually know how to take advantage of AI and ultimately everyone wins. Yeah, one of the great use cases for that is in IT operations. Yeah. You know, you, you, because the amount of manual tasking and repetitive tasking within that is, uh, is pretty significant. You start to augment that with AI capability, you can deliver real efficiency for the enterprise. So you're not eliminating the human, you're eliminating the things that humans hate to do. Or yeah, that's a nice way to very think good about at it. it. Right, it's sort of error prone. What are the big barriers that you're seeing in the, in the customer base? How are you approaching them? And, and where, does, where do HPE services and Deloitte services you know, intersect? Yeah, okay, so uh, let's take that one at a time. So in terms of barriers, I mean, I think, I think skills and expertise is a barrier. This is, this is really complex. There's, there's so many options, choices, and things being said there. So understanding what to prioritize, having the right skills in place in order to, to, to even know where to begin and how to progress is, is a significant barrier. And, and probably the other one I'd pull out is, is data, actually. Because, you know, you know, we can, as you heard from Antonio, right, we can land a private cloud AI platform and we can have that, what is it? three clicks, 24 seconds, but actually having the right data sources and meaningful data sources in order to drive and, and you know, make that AI perform for you is, is, is a key barrier. So those are some of the things we're, we're working to help with. In terms of, of the partnership, I think it's just a, there's a really nice fit. You know, HPE services capability, our value is, is, is really platform driven. Mm -hmm. So when you think about um, you, you know, our new private cloud for AI, yeah, we can drive the, the kind of the implementation, the optimization, driving that platform all the way through, plus the skills component. We've done, and you might have heard it in the keynote yesterday, driving certifications, enabling certifications and skills. Our partnership with NVIDIA there is very, very strong. So we bring a lot of that to the table. But Deloitte have a whole set, what, what do you want to, you want to pick up on the Deloitte piece? Yeah, I, I, I completely agree with your, your assessment um, skills. You know, it's, it's the most important thing. And, and if you think about, how you, you actually think about the, the whole equation of how to activate AI. You need powerful platforms, you need powerful logic, and you need significant amount of data. If you bring the three together and add some skills, engineering, business, and others to it, that's when you start unlocking the value. And if you think about data, for the past so many years, enterprises have spent a lot of time putting data into structured systems. ERP platforms, other platforms, and so on and so forth. Now there's so much unstructured data that is sitting in enterprise that it actually brings that magic to life. And they're your contracts, they're your terms and conditions, they are your relationships and guiding principles. You turn those into power of data added to the logic, then all of a sudden you can come up with some significant impact in specific areas like for your procurement, for your expenses, for capital management, and so on and so forth. And again, the quality of the results that you generate for AI matters so much. You can only increase that quality with the amount and quality of the data that you have. Now the other piece, of course, that Deloitte brings is industry expertise, deep 
industry expertise. So uh, about well, 18 months ago, the Cube Research put out the power law of Gen AI. So we kind of took liberties with the power law, but the, the vertical axis was size of model. So we know there's some big models and they're being trained and, and a lot of activity happening, but we know the names of the companies that are doing so, but the, the horizontal axis was model specificity and, and industry specificity, we laid out some of the industries. Yeah. And that is where we think the action is going to be. So I love your point of view on how that's progressing. First of all, do you sort of buy that power law, um, which is different than in many, I mean, it's a long tail, but actually the, there's so much value on that long tail this time around. Do you buy that premise and what are you seeing in terms of, of industries applying AI, whether it's building their own models or adding value to models? Absolutely, I mean, and by the way, that, that is a, a significant uh, ingredient mm -hmm. for the success. If you think about a simple example of manufacturing, right. manufacturing requirements for a high-tech company is completely different from the requirements of a life sciences and you know, medical devices company. One has significant amount of you know, requirements from com compliance perspective, the other one has significant amount of requirements from quality perspective and capability perspective. We have gained that knowledge and experience for years and years and we have perfected how you add that ingredient to the entire strategy, implementation, and investments around technology to amplify the results out of it. So that is where we believe this partnership is going to be a significant one. And it's one of the forward. first solutions we're bringing, right? It's in the Absolutely. digital twin around smart manufacturing. Yeah. And, and I think that's the, you know, where you, your combination starts to come together when you look at that industry expertise and solution orientation, where we are in terms of driving that private cloud platform for AI, because in these data rich, kind of edge based environments, kind of highly regulated environments, then private cloud is clearly the platform of choice. You bring those pieces together, it's about fast time to value, which ultimately is a source of competitive differentiation. Another example, Rebecca, of the physical and the digital worlds coming together. Right? Yeah, indeed, indeed. I mean, we know, we're here at HPE Discover, Gen AI, Gen AI is on everyone's lips. But as you've also just described, companies are at different points in their AI journey. Some are all in and already raring to go and already, frankly, experimenting and seeing some ROI. Other companies are taking, are more, trepidatious and taking a more cautious approach. What, I'd love to hear from both of you, what your advice is for companies who, who haven't yet started but are, but are eager to, to start. Yeah, well I think, well, my first piece of advice would be connect with Hewlett Packard Enterprise and Deloitte, <laughs> okay. right? That's maybe a, a, a great place to get started. No, I think it, you know, it comes back to data readiness, data sources, understanding that, understanding the use case pipeline that exists and getting the right degree of prioritization behind that. And actually having an environment where you can start to bring these experiments into test so you can get a better sense around benefit realization. I mean, I still think you know, a lot of the business case work is still maybe slightly more art than science, right? But there's an underlying belief Belief of the efficiencies that this technology can bring, and a real and a real desire, but also a, a need to be ahead of that. So I think you know, connect in the right way, understand the capabilities available, and bring the right expertise into to augment what exists, whilst not forgetting to actually build your own skill base within organisations. And I think collectively across the partnership, we can we can help with that. I had to, maybe the one other thing I'd I'd add is uh, is also to think about governance. Early. It's one of the topics we maybe not touched on, but, but kind of governance of the model is pretty, pretty important. Yeah, what I would add is, um, if you think over the, the past you know, 30 years, every organization had to become tech savvy. Then they need to become cloud savvy, private, hybrid, and public. And now they have to become AI savvy. Understanding how that AI savviness can come to life solely depends on the details around use cases to avoid creating science projects. And, and what Mark was talking about is like, these technologies are so powerful. It's so easy to get into it and start experimenting. But how long you experiment? Eventually you have to think about ROI and value and, and understanding use cases and having clarity around what outcomes you're expecting to get matters. And the last thing I'm going to say is, in the AI world, data is the new currency for every organization to think about the value of the data they have today and how that can unlock the value of AI for them is going to matter so much. So this, this notion of ROI is interesting. At the beginning of the year, we sort of made the prediction is this, this, this has got to be the year of AI ROI or else, and we said, look, the or else means 
that it's got to hit in the second half and start being you know, self-funding or else CFOs are going to tighten up. And we've noticed that about 42% of customers tell us that they're funding AI from other areas. And this is the first time this, this survey that's in the field now with our partner ETR, that budgets have become a blocker. The blockers have been you know, legal, compliance, governance, yep. and now budget. So we, we're not seeing the CFOs open the checkbooks. To your point, Abdi, just say, hey, go ahead and experiment. No, we, don't, we can't with the economics, the headwinds, et cetera. So do you feel like toward the second half of this year with solutions like what you guys have announced, with the expertise you're bringing to bear, we're going to exit 2024 with that sort of gain sharing, that self-funding, or do you think it's going to be more pushed into to 2025? Yeah, well, I'll, I'll start that one and maybe you can, you can finish it off. I mean, we're seeing budgets move actually from being one-time innovation budgets around AI to start to move into a more generalized kind of software type budgeting model. So we're seeing that, that progression. Okay. But I think given the solutions that we have, particularly some of the, the horizontal solutions as a collective, we're very confident on benefit realization, so much so that when we think about silicon to service, as one of the outcomes of this AI collaboration, we're in the motion and the mode of being able to offer outcome-based mm -hmm. risk-sharing models into the market because we're so confident on the benefits that can be realized um, that we can start to contract in that way. I don't know if you want to no, expand on that. Absolutely, I completely agree in, in, in the concept. Um, I actually, we see uh, a different trend because the order of magnitude of ROI from AI investment is far more than previous technology generations. And one of the, the, the most important elements of AI is its agility. You don't need to take months and years in order to get the results. The speed in which generates results, it's much better than the past. Therefore, the desire of the executives to, to spend more on AI is far better than before. I give an example around banking. In the banking space, you do not you know, think about 99% accuracy. It has to be 100% accuracy in order for you to think about the results. Well, you can get to 100% accuracy far faster than the past. Therefore, banking sector is like, we need to invest more in AI because it will get us to where we need to get far sooner. So. And I think that's true what you're saying about your four uh, uh, first principles, automation being one of them. You can now apply automation to, and, and, and get like super high quality uh, outcomes for you know, Six Sigma, for example, for things that you would never try to get to Six Sigma before, but now you can do it because of automation. And that's going to affect the quality of the business. So you would say this would be the year of AI ROI. Is that, I mean, is that Maybe fair? it already is. Already is, you think? To some extent it is, yeah. because if you think about the heart of the business, like for example, think about cancer research. Yeah. You know, activating AI and the computing power that, that, that HP and other organizations bring to, to the table can actually get you to the results far faster. Automation has been part of the enterprise journey for a few years. Mm -hmm. They did not have enough computing power to right. accelerate it and they wanted to figure out a way to get the results and, and data uh, quality out of the data. Now AI allows you to not to go through many you know, significant investments to get there. I actually believe this year, this calendar year, is a great year that we will start seeing significant results out of AI investments. Right. Yeah, awesome. absolutely. Good, my prediction will come true. All right, oh, well done. I love bold <laughs> predictions. Excellent, Mark. Yeah, and I think it's a team, right, yeah, AI, it, it's a team sport. When you come down to expertise being the driver for time to value, benefit realization, and overall experience, it's having the right people, having the right team, and I think this alliance and the partnership that we bring collectively with NVIDIA as well, because let's remember it's a three-way collaboration, is the right team to deliver the right value and those benefits that you talked about. A great note to end on, Mark and Abby. Thank you, thank you thank so you much for thank you coming so much. on the show. Thank you. I'm Rebecca Knight for Dave Vellante. Stay tuned for more of theCUBE's live coverage of HPE Discover. You're watching theCUBE, the leader in enterprise tech news and analysis.